Hi, we're going to talk about chapter 14, which is the geometry of change. Um, there are just a few learning targets that I just want to talk about very briefly. First, um, we're going to talk about determining the location of a shape after a translation, rotation, or reflection. We're going to talk about, um, given a shape, determine, determining its symmetries and creating a design with given symmetries. We're going to talk about the triangle congruence criteria, like side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, side. Um, we're going to talk about scale factor and using say, scale factor to find unknown side lengths and um, about solving problems of volume and area with similar shapes. Okay, so let's start by talking about transformations. A transformation is simply an action that changes a plane and the, there are four transformations that I just want to talk about and I have three up here and so I'm just going to talk about the fourth. So first of all, translation is also known as a slide and for a translation to occur, you have to be given the direction and the distance. And you'll just see that the, sh the shape itself does not change at all. Um, neither does the size of that shape. Uh, that's a, just a simple translation. A reflection is also known as a flip. And given a line of reflection, the figure simply flips over that line of reflection. And you're going to notice, and I labeled the points here, um, and I should have labeled all of these primes, because as soon as these pi points get flipped over, they are actually retaining their distance from one another. And they actually also retain their distance from that line of reflection, which is important as well. If you draw a perpendicular line through the line of reflection, the distance between that point to the line of reflection on either side of that reflection remains the same. Um, and then a rotation is around a given point. And so you can see here that this was rotated about 90 degrees. And again, the direction, or excuse me, the distance between the points within the shape itself remain the same. So that's an important distinction for transformations, that they change the plane, but they simply do not change the distance between the points of that shape. Um, symmetries. We talk about basically four simple symmetries that go along with our reflections here. So reflection symmetry, um, translation symmetry, rotation symmetry, and glide reflection. If you look at this example right here, a rotation, this figure has rotation symmetry. I can basically turn it around this point, and I am able to basically copy the shape at any time um, that I'm able to do that. It has four fold rotations, so I can do that in four different ways. And you can see that I have four lines of symmetry. Each of these is a line of symmetry. It's basically the idea of folding a piece of paper in half and showing that the two sides are the same, or thinking back to the mirror image of itself. Okay. Lastly, let's talk about congruence and similarity. Um, when we talk about congruence, we're talking about the triangle congruence criteria. And we just want to talk about these three right now, the side, 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 meaning that if you have three sides of a triangle um, that are congruent, then the two triangles are going to be congruent. Same with side, angle, side. If you're given two sides of a triangle for both triangles and the angle between them, then you're going to know that those two triangles are congruent. Same with angle, side, angle. If you have two angles and then the side between them, you're going to know that those two triangles are congruent. Um, we also talked about angle, angle, angle not working, and that's because you can see here these angles remain the same, but the size of the triangle changes. So this shows similarity, but it does not show congruence. Um, and then this side, side, angle does not work as well because you you would need that angle to be between those two sides in order to work because here you have this option of this third side being a little different. Um, and then lastly, I just want to talk about similarity briefly. Similarity is simply um, going to allow us to solve many problems with figures that are similar. So in this case, these two rectangles are similar. And you can see that I have the sides labeled 2 and 3, 4 and x. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is solve this unknown side length by using the three methods that we talked about. And one is scale factor, another is internal factor, and another is proportion. Um, the scale factor, factor method looks from one figure to the next figure. So I'm looking from this rectangle to this rectangle, and I see the relationship from 2 to 4 is 2. And then I'm going to apply that to this unknown side length. 3 times 2 is 6. If I want to use the internal factor method, then I'm looking at the relationship between the sides of the first figure. And I can see that the relationship between 2 and 3 is this. 2 times 1 and a half is 3. So I know that 4 times 1 and a half will have that same um, proportion. 4 times 1 and a half is 6. Of course, I get the same answer. Or I could set up a proportion. 2 is to 3 is 4 is to blank. And I can cross multiply and divide here and still end up with, of course, the same answer of 6. Um, just remember this about similar figures. They retain their shape, they retain their angle measures, and they have sides that are in proportion to each other. And that's what allows us to look at these various methods of solving for an unknown side. 
Um, there's many real-world applications to using similarity and understanding scale factor. Um, this is just one example, finding the height of something like a tree that's too tall for us to actually um, easily measure. Um, we can either use the measures of the, the shadow that the tree casts in comparison to the shadow that a person will cast um, in order to find the height of that tree. And that's what I did here. I noticed that the distance here um, for the six-foot person casting a 12-foot shadow would be the same as this tree casting a 60-foot shadow. It's going to be in proportion to one another. So that tells me that since 6 is half of 12, 30 is half of 60. So the tree is 30 feet tall. OK, I know that was quick, but I hope that it helps um, sort of summarize everything we talked about in Chapter 14. Thanks.